Spikenzie Labs have been kind enough to send me over their Solder Time 2 watch kit. Now you might remember that I put together the original Solder Time watch some months ago and did a video that I've put up on YouTube about that one. Now that was a pretty basic watch, it just told the time and that was it. The new Solder Time 2 watch promises to do quite a bit more, but first off you've got to make it up. Now that web address there links you to the instructions and I've got them on my iPad screen here. So I'll just flick down and show you what's required to put this thing together. There's quite a few steps, all nicely illustrated and explained with a few hints and tips in there as well. It looks pretty complicated to be honest, but we'll give it a go. Hopefully end up with that at the end of it. So let's go back up to the top and see what tools we need to put this together. Well, this is it. It's solder, a soldering iron, a trimmer and some tape. So I've got those things together. Now the sharp eyed amongst you might notice that my solder came from a shop called Tandy. Now the older viewers will remember that but the younger ones were probably born after it shut down and that shows you how much soldering I do. I've still got most of that reel left. So I'm not exactly an expert electronics wizard but let's try putting this watch together. So the first job is to get everything out of the packaging. That's the main circuit board there, which is round as opposed to square in the previous one. It's quite nicely printed. And notice on this side, the chips are already soldered to it. So that was a job you had to do yourself on the old one, but these are much smaller chips. Now, first thing is attach the battery holder. So put a bit of tape on that, solder both sides of that, and we're off and running. Take that tape off, see if it stays put. Yes, right, good. So. 1% of the way there. Next thing, the timing crystal. That's a very small piece there. It just goes through those two holes at the top. Again, solder the legs on the back of it and uh, trim those legs off using the trimming tool. The display on the new Solder Time 2 is a matrix of LEDs, which enables it to display messages. The previous one just used normal LED numbers. So once you've got all those put through there, then again, this is my tip anyway, um, tape a bit of tape to it and flip it over so it holds them in place while you solder the legs one at a time. You notice there's loads of legs there. Now I'm not that brilliant with a soldering iron and to be honest as I started doing this I really lost confidence in what I was doing. My eyesight seemed to be going, the soldering iron was going everywhere, the solder was going everywhere and at this point I thought you know what I've absolutely ruined this thing. So I was thinking in my head, how am I going to write to the Spikenzie Labs people and tell them, yeah, thanks for the free sample, but I actually destroyed it while I was putting it together. But you know what? I decided, oh, sod it. I'll just carry on soldering it all the way through and we'll see what damage I've done at the end. But if this thing works, it'll be an absolute miracle. So what we're doing is we're soldering the individual legs, trimming them off, working our way across the board from one end to the other. And now I've done all that, we'll take that tape off and uh, hopefully everything will stay in place. Now we'll put the switches on there. These are the buttons, I should say, for changing the time and things. Those pop into the front there, just below the display. Again, I'm going to put a bit of tape across those so that they uh, hold in place while I flip it over. The thing I'm using here is just one of those helping hand things. I know people asked about this last time, but it's just some cheap helping hand thing I got from somewhere. No idea where it came from. It was many, many years ago. So solder the legs onto that and again trim those off when you're finished. Now we're getting near the end of the assembly now. Now of course I've sped this up or just showing the highlights I suppose. But it took me about an hour in total to get to this point. I think if you knew what you were doing you could do it a lot quicker. Now this bit that I'm putting on now is the speaker. Notice there's a couple of little raised plastic dots either side of that. I've got to trim those off. So I'm going to do that with a craft knife. Not recommended, and that might explain to some of you why my fingers are always knackered up in these videos. I'm always doing things like this and getting it wrong. So we put the speaker on, solder on the uh, two legs onto the back of that, and again, of course, trim those off. And that's it. So the whole assembly is done. So now we're going to put this battery in and see what kind of uh, damage I've done to this thing. And amazingly, it's lit up. We'll turn the light off so we can see it. There you go. It shows the time for a second and then says night and switches off. So let's put a lamp test in by holding the left button and putting the battery in to see that all the lamps are lit. And that line goes all the way across. And as you can see here, every single one's lit. 
So maybe I should have had a bit more confidence in my soldering ability, but to be honest, as I was doing it, it did look a real mess, so I'm surprised that this is working at all. Now let's just um, carry on assembling the watch. The next bit is to get the plastic bits here, which are covered in a blue protective tape to protect them during transit, stop them getting scratched. But you have to remove that tape off each one so that you end up with this sort of clear acrylic pieces. You've got to be careful with that to avoid cracking them. And believe it or not, I did sort of crack one of my pieces. You might better see that in the end video, but try and ignore that because it, it doesn't actually matter. We'll put through these little bolt type things into the bottom piece here, which is the piece I'm holding now. And then we feed through the Velcro strap. We put it sort of soft side down. And then you've got to try it on because there's a few different places you can put that strap through to make it different widths and see how you like it in that position. Once you're happy, then start assembling the watch. So you put the individual rings on and then the watch unit itself and just stack them up like a bit of a sort of plastic watch sandwich until you've got them all assembled. It's a bit of a puzzle this, it's quite entertaining really. But once you've got them all lined up, then you can put the screws through so it goes all the way through the pieces and into those nuts that we put on the back there. You can tighten them up by your finger, but really I think to do it properly you need a hex screwdriver, which is something it didn't recommend you needed, but I like to use that just to tighten them up a little bit. But don't tighten too much, otherwise you'll end up cracking the case. And let's have a look at the functions of the watch. Now we've got it all together. So tap the right hand button, you get the time. Notice at the top left there, there's an LED lit up. That's to say that it's PM. And then it's Sunday, July the 8th. And then back to the time again. Now we'll just wait a second here. And after a couple of seconds of the time being displayed, it then says night and switches off. So again, we'll turn it on again, tap the right button, tap it again this time, get into the set menu, tap the left one to set, tap the left one again to change the minutes or the hours or the month. And we'll change it into 24 hour mode. And now we'll just let it go back and time out again and go back to switching off again. So that I can show you what it looks like in 24 hour mode. Turn it on. There you go, 1320. I prefer the 24 hour clock. Right, now we'll get into the alarm. So set the alarm. So let's set it for half past one. So we'll just uh, tap the left hand button here quite a few times to get down to half past. And then tap that one there, tap the left one again to switch it on. Notice the tick next to the speaker there. While we're waiting for the alarm, the next mode is the stopwatch. Tap the left hand button to start the stopwatch. It's only in seconds. I don't think it's too accurate to be honest. Tap the left one again to stop. Tap the right one, get into a text display where it has a scrolling message. Notice on this one it says Spikenzie Labs. If you tap the left hand button here, you can alter the speed of that scrolling message. It goes slower at first and then eventually when you tap it enough times, it goes back to the fastest level again. Tap the right hand one, it says Worm. You can turn a speaker on, which makes this kind of clicking sound. And you can alter the amplitude of that wave form there, I think it is. It does nothing really, to be honest, that it's just a sort of fancy thing. So let's uh, wait for that alarm to come on. Oh, by the way, notice the dot at the bottom left there to say that the alarm's on. And let's wait a second. Right, the alarm only sounds for about sort of five or six seconds and switches off like that. OK, now you don't have to just stick with what's in it because notice on the back here, there's these pins that you can get to at the top. And if you know what you're doing and you've got the right kit, you can program this watch to do different things. I don't know what I'm doing and I don't have the right kit, so I'm not going to be doing that. Anyway, I've got to say thanks again to Spikenzi Labs for sending this watch over. I, I did enjoy putting it together, even if it was a bit stressful at times. It costs about $59 for that kit. And it's not a foolproof kit, but if I can put it together, it's certainly fool resistant. But I'm still not sure I'd want to wear this watch if I was going to go and get on a plane. For the moment, thanks for watching.